Okay, time for valve clearances. We need 0.11 to 0.15 here on the exhaust. Um, so we're going to go grab our feeler gauge. I have 0.15 here, and as you can see, there's like a, a million years between these two. You just want to stick it in, and you want a light drag. Um, so what we're going to do... Is grab hold of a 10mm and undo this lock nut. Here. and then um, there's a, a special tool for this but a pair of pliers will do the trick we're just going to turn this square in a little bit and um, you kind of need to hold it at the same time as you do this back up because it will drag it round a bit sometimes you get lucky So we're still a bit loose there. I should also mention um, while we're doing this that uh, in order to do this you have to have the engine at top dead centre so that there's no pressure on the valves trying to push them up. Otherwise you'll set them too tight and it won't be good for the engine. I think we've gone a bit over there. Yep. Okay, that's nearly right. And imagine that's going to tighten up as I turn this. You'll be able to see better than me. So that properly bit on 12.15 um, and that's the upper tolerance so we should be a-okay with that these will probably need adjusting after the engines run for a little while anyway we can always uh, double check just by popping a, a smaller feeler gauge in but i think in order to do that i'm going to have to stack So yeah, the smallest I've got in here that I can reasonably do with this is a 0.1, so I'd say maybe we're a touch tight, but you could pontificate over this um, just about forever. Intake side is... Um, 0.09 to 0.05 so we'll um, do the same thing over there and then we can check how the timing is getting on I'll be back in a second okay off camera I've tightened up these bolts down here checked that the oil drain and the filter and the screen and everything that's in there are in there properly from when I took them out and tightened it back up again I've tightened this up to factory torque. The head bolts are all up to factory torque as you would have seen originally. And this tensioner is in. With this cam sprocket, you have to kind of set everything up in lines. So there's a mark here with this dot. There's a line in here and a marker with a T for top dead center. And you just kind of have to uh, get the cam chain uh, sprocket on in the right place pop it on to see if it lines up if it doesn't persuade it round by one tooth so I've done that I've tightened it up um, I've screwed this tensioner in until there's no you know I can't feel any play down here it's a bit of an unknown with this manual cam chain tensioner this is this style where it's completely up to you what tension you put on it is not available on this bike that's an aftermarket part 
most guides I can find for small engines like this, so get it, tighten it in until you feel it, you know, resist, then out a tiny bit, start the engine. If it's noisy, just gently tighten it a little bit and then lock it off. You want to balance between destroying the cam chain followers um, and leaving enough room for it to, to hop off. I've also got an auto tensioner coming, but um, what I'll probably do is figure out what tension the auto tensioner puts on it and then replicate that with this manual one because it's far less likely to go wrong. So all that done, I'm going to dump a litre of oil into the bike um, so that everything is nice and lubricated and I'm going to stick a bit more oil down the cylinder just so that our nice fresh piston has some lubrication. I'm going to spin it over 20 times by hand just to make absolutely sure that everything's staying in time, nothing's going to jump, nothing's, you know, waiting to fall off. Then we'll spin it on the starter the same way. We've got no spark plug in it, so it won't make compression. We're just uh, turning it slowly by hand to make sure nothing's hitting anything else and everything's opening and closing. We can pop our thumb over the um, spark plug hole to make sure we're making compression. Essentially, it's just a not-so-dry run but a run without the risk of starting just to make sure that everything stays where it's supposed to when the engine's moving at a couple of hundred RPM instead of, you know, two by hand. Okay, let's pop some oil in it. Everything looks good so far. I'd be a lot happier if I could see oil up the top here. There we go. It took its time, but it's up at the top now. So in theory, we've got an engine that can run. Um, I'm bricking it, to be honest with you. After all this work, I mean, it's always the way whenever you rebuild something. I was the same with Terry when I rebuilt him. I was the same with my dad's Volvo T5, although that was a much more expensive prospect if the uh, everything had gone wrong. But yeah, suffice to say, I'm bricking it. It's now or never. It's cobbled together. I know I haven't got the side plate on the camera. That's probably going to throw oil everywhere. I just want to hear it start. Ignore the oil dripping down it. That's because I'm an idiot and I can't aim with the oil. Everything's loosely slung back together. Let's see what happens. Took me a second to find the right o-ring for this. We know oil is circulating the engine now, so we can pop this on. <laughs> 